I, I don't know about you. This has been, this month right here has just been, I'm like my tongue's all tied. I can't even talk about it right now. Uh, that was True Soul Davis with Open Your Heart. If you're just tuning in, you're live right here with Nakia on Indie Fire and special guest, True Soul Davis. How you doing? Hey. Hey, what's going on? I'm good. How you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I will say that I normally do not listen to music prior to the guests, you know, coming on the show because I want to be just as um, thrilled as the listening audience is. But, you know, I did have the opportunity to receive uh, some of your music, and uh, I listened to, you know, snippets of some of your music. But this song I had not heard. So uh, right. talk about opening up. Oh, okay. Well, you know, Open Your Heart was um inspired uh it was inspired by one of the greats, my God, Christopher, Christopher Williams. Yeah, the song is mm. called All I See Is Your Love. And I took a little bit of that and a little bit of Johnny Gill, uh, Let's Get the Mood Right. You know, 'cause I mess with both of them cats. Those guys are like heavyweights in the game and I respect them. And um I tried to figure out a way I can do a, a ballad you know, similar to what they did and try to keep a touch of what they do today, you know, or at least a modernized sound. Right. And um, at that time in my life, I was actually in a very, very happy, you know, relationship. So it was like, you know, give me a chance, you know, open your heart, you know. Mm. Well, it worked for the moment. It worked for the moment. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it definitely I'm so used to dealing with you know, R and B. I'm sorry. I'm used to dealing with the hip hop artists, uh, the rap artists. Um, so it's refreshing to to start the new year out with so many phenomenal R and B artists. Like, like I'm just sitting here thinking, like you could send me to sleep any night. Oh my gosh. Uh, speaking of singing, <laughs> I do publicly let me publicly say thank you um, for my uh, my birthday song. I did receive several right. birthday songs. I don't know how everybody thinks they could sing, but uh, you know, I was I was I was smiling. I was grinning from ear to ear. So thank you for my birthday song. Thank you. No doubt. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to send it. You know, thank you for yeah. being born. You know. Uh, stop! Don't give me blessing now. All right. And I feel like before we like get into it, I just want to say I love your name. <laughs> you know, I love the meaning of your name. You know that? That's dope. Uh-oh. You know, like here? Yeah. Oh, y'all hear yeah. how to say that? Mm. I'm going to behave. Pure and faithful. All right. So. Beautiful. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, as, as most um, most artists that I've talked to, um, their musical beginning started in, in the church. So, right. and then reading your bio. You know, it states that you were singing in local choirs as a youth. Um, does your family, you know, or is your family musically inclined? Do you come from a musical background? Well, see, that's what my dad is. He, my older sister, they both singers. And I remember when I was a kid watching him do his thing, him and his friends, you know, <laughs> at the house. It would be funny, you know, and I would just mimic them, you know, trying to do what my dad was doing. But, uh... Like I said, my love, my mother, she was a DJ. And she really the one that made me love music. Like, oh, I mean, wow. she was the bring. She got a, had all the albums, that she, any album you could think of. She had it, and I just would listen to the records all day. So I loved music, like loved it. You know. Wow. So not, was she in the studio <laughs> as a DJ, or no, was my, she uh, just been like on air DJ? And that's yeah. the record shop. Nah, not really. Like, I, mean, I wish, but nah. nah. Not the party. I mean, not the radio. <laughs> got you, got you. Um, now, now your style is is considered R and B. Right. Um, your genre, I should say, is considered R and B. Yes. Yes. I gotta jump right out and and you no, know, I need to know this name, the R and B nympho. I I need to know. Like what I'm walking into before I go any further. Where did this name come from? Because I make love to the music. Like when I get into this music, I really, without being too, you know, 
graphic. I really dig into this. So I'm an R&B nympho, man, you know? I just love it. All shades of it. Fifty <laughs> shades of <laughs> soul. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, I like that. So um, how would you describe your musical style? Because not everybody who is, is R&B, you know, you have your contemporary R&B. Um, you have the R&B that blends more with soul. Um, you have your bluesy type R&B. You know, how would you describe your particular style of R&B? Traditional R&B, just traditional, you know what I'm saying, just of the, of the essence. Like, I try not to stray too far, you know, away from um, what I what I do. Like, you know, I had a guy, my, like my investor was talking to me today. He was like, you know, you can't do that style. Like he was showing me these other cats. I'm like, I could do that. You feel me? But I, I consider that like, like trap, that trap R and B stuff they doing. I consider that like that's they lane. Like I can't. Like my my main mission with doing music was like, of course I got the sexual side, but it's also about bringing love back to the music, bringing love back into the world because everybody's scared to love. You know what I'm saying? It seems like everybody either turning up or turned down or drugged out. It's like you don't hear them talk about love like they're scared of it. But see, I don't blame some of them because they don't know how to love. They haven't been loved before, whether it's from the mother, the father, their girlfriend, like whatever. Like they haven't been loved. All they know is, you know, a quick, I'm going to just say session or, or whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? So I try to stick to my essence of traditional R&B. Like you got some of these cats that don't even know the names of the samples they use. Like they don't even know who the artists be. Like, so I don't know. I, I stick to the essence of R&B. You know, so traditional R&B. I'm sorry if I went off topic. No, no, that was good because um, you, you said something that I've been having to explain to some people a lot um, or about a lot lately, um, and that's that's the word love. And you said, you know, some people are, are afraid of the word love. Um, and you listed, you know, the reasons um do you find that the music that you write you focus more on that type of individual or is it about being the R and B nympho? Nah, it's more so about being in love. That's what majority of my music is. Like I don't know if you ever had a chance, but if you do get a chance, you know, you should check out the True Experience one. The first one, the True Experience album. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. it was it was mainly driven I mean you might have checked it out though. It was mainly driven by mm-hmm. love, like you know, what about me? It was uh what about me was written because uh you no, know, I don't know about not just me, but everybody's been in this situation for the most part is where you start off in a lustful situation where you lust enough to someone and y'all mess around and y'all keep messing around but yeah. you know the other one already has a significant other. So at the end yeah, of the day yeah. they're not leaving their family for you. So it's like, Well what right. about me? You feel me? Right. So it's about being heartbroken. And then you got stuff like your man ain't me saying that uh, you know, Shorty was into <laughs> me and she was feeling me. I'm like, your man ain't me, baby, so it's either me or him, you know, it's either all or nothing, you know what I'm saying? Right. I know he's running around like a player making you look silly, but, you know, I know you want this, but you got to get rid of that, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's mostly right. love, you know what I'm saying? I do certain songs and put it out at certain times to pull in a certain audience, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to seem like, I don't want to get too far away from, like, the guys or the younger people, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not old per se, but my music it has a mature sound. You know, open your heart, right. everybody can feel it, but some of the young ones don't know nothing about opening your heart. They don't know nothing about that. So I hit them over the head with something like Ride, something they hit to, Ooh. to drill to reel them in. You know what I'm saying? And once they reel in, they're like, damn, he talking about riding. Well, excuse my language. He's talking about dang, he talking about riding, and you know this, that, and the third. But then he turn around and say, do you believe in love? Do you believe in love like a fairy tale? That's one of my joints. I ain't want to give you that, but I'm going to give you that, you know. That's one of my joints on that next project, you know. Do you believe in that fairy tale kind of love? You know, first, love and first sight. You know, do you believe in love? Because I do. Even though I got my heart broke, not, you know, I don't get all into that, but not too long ago. You know, I got my heart broke. I still believe in love. And that's only because of the friendships around me. I got some dope friends out there, you know what I'm saying? Like, and when I say love and, and friends, I mean male and female, you know, no homo. I ain't into all that. You know, I love the women. But when I say dope friends and love, I get genuine love from people, man, and it, it really helps. They don't know it all the time, but it really helps. It really builds me up. They keep me doing this music because I want to give up, but this is what I do. And through the heartbreak, I use that to drive what I do 
You know what I'm saying? So my nine to five is one thing, but my five to nine is what I do. You know? Right. Yeah, so that would have been my next question. I don't know what it is about the men. Y'all been reading my mind a lot lately. Like, you answer my question before I can answer it. What, what, what? Not because I talk too much. Yeah, hey, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. You're boosting my energy. You know, you made a point that, you know, having your friends around, being able to carry you through a, um, a, you know, um, rough situation is is very vital and will allow you to, um, to push harder, you know, um, especially mm-hmm. for something that you're passionate about. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I do that. Like, I got days where, you know, I'm, I'm going to be up under the bed, like, all day long. That's how I'm going to be at. Until somebody hits me up and, you know, I got music, I need to stick a teak, or, you know, I'm trying to get in on this tour, or I need this, or I need that. And so because of my passion for, you know, radio presentation, that I'm always going to be there. I'm always going to show up. So most definitely the love from your friends and, um, your families, and you know, for me, it's just the artists, the guests who have been on the show. You know, I have yeah. just, like took them all in. Once you're on the show, your family, and so um, you know, and that's that's the connection and the bond that you're able to build with people. And they, when they could show you, like you said, genuine love. You know, you know the difference. You know, so yeah, talk. That's all good. You could talk. Uh, what's a typical day like for you? Oh man. If I'm not working, because I do still do that, you know, the regular nine to five to support the five to nine at times. Um, I might do that, you know, go to work, deal with people all day, singing all damn day outside. <laughs> um, I come home, might sit me some Hennessy, privilege only shot the Hennessy, by the way. I sit me some Hennessy or something, you know, calm down, <laughs> get the blood flowing. I cut on the track that I've been listening to all day, because, I mean, you might ask me, so I'm not going to get into all that. I'll wait till you ask me. But, um, I. I just, you know, come on, might play the game. Like, I'm a 2K dude. I play 2K and Call of Duty. Like, shout out to my brother Scrap, you know, my brother Will, you know. I play that, you know, to relieve a little stress, kill people. Only game, only game, not in real life. And then I get to the music. Like, I'm going to put in some time for me and my music, no doubt, you know. And a lot of people don't do that. I, every day I put in some type of music grind and my lines. Like, if I got a play or a movie coming up, I put that in there. I got to. So and I think that, that's you know, important. work, right? Yeah, that's important, and every uh, everyone should have. I'm not saying you should follow his his blueprint, but when it comes to your music and when it comes to what you're passionate about, every day it's like you get up and go to your nine to five, you know, or your eight to five or whatever. You have to put that same energy into your music as well. Like you can't, you know, say, all right, I got a little free time today, so I'm a, you know. I'm going to lay down this verse, and then you don't come back until the following week. You have to be consistent. You know, you, if this is what you're passionate about, you have to be consistent with it. So I'll fill you on that right there. Well, what's, uh, what's your songwriting process like? Do you write <laughs> first? Yeah, I knew that was coming. Nah, see, <laughs> when it comes to me making songs, yo, like, shout out to my producer, Yashu, by the way. That's one of my, that's the, like, the newest producer to my team. I just added TMG. Taylor Main Music Group is the unit. But um, let's just say, for instance, y'all should send me a beat. I listen to the job. Like, it's dope. I cut it on, and I press record. I don't write nothing down. It's coming from the heart. That's why everything I write, and I ain't bragging, yo. Like, I ain't bragging. I ain't, I ain't saying I'm not the R&B Lil Wayne. Shout out to Lil Wayne. But I'm just saying, like, when it comes to music, it's always so genuine because it really comes from the heart. Like, literally, like, I literally, how I feel that day come from the heart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't writing so, down nothing. So, I think the artist I had on Tuesday was, like, the same way. Word. Everything was just, he didn't write nothing. He was going to the studio and be like, damn, this is it right here. Like, <laughs> off the dome. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Now, um, you you mentioned um, you you said this word quite a lot. You know, coming from the heart and you know being passionate and um, which emotion more than any other drives you to stay in this industry? Would you say it would be anger, desire, pride, joy, 
a passion. It's a it's a it's a mix 